Welcome to the barn. I hope I can pass on a little tip or trick that can help you in your horseshoeing, whether you're an amateur, professional, looking to learn something new. This is a trick my dad passed along to me. It's called spooning the heel. So have you ever set a shoe, put the hoof down and thought, oh, there's just a little more shoe hanging out the back of that hoof than what I intended. Of course, this tends to be on front feet. Well, that's where spooning the heel comes in. Perhaps you also have an issue with a horse pulling a shoe. Maybe you have a horse that likes to paw a fence. Maybe you're shooting for a client that has uh, a wire fence and they tend to get the wire hooked underneath their shoe. The spooning trick I think you'll find to be beneficial uh, in these cases. Uh, I'll go ahead and demonstrate it and then we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the applications. But uh, spooning the heel is really a simple modification to the shoe. For the sake of demonstration, you see I have a used horseshoe. This is a St. Croix, appears to be a double ought eventer. Uh, front shoe and what I'm going to do now is spoon the heel and we'll, we can go ahead and do both so uh, you can really use um, uh, Any edge on your anvil. I like to use the part. That's the sharpest uh, It gives you the best crease. You can use the back of your anvil for me. This this works best here Often uh, what you're trying to spoon is about the last quarter or an eighth Maybe you've got a little bit more shoe that you'd like to turn up in the spooning process, but uh, you'll see this modification. So I want the, the heel uh, placed towards me, and as I hammer, I am going to draw my hammer down through the anvil. Initial good crease. And with each blow, I am bringing that hammer down and through me, and my shoe is slightly working down. And you see the shoe's going down, the hammer's going more flat, and now I've successfully spooned the heel. As you can see what that does is that takes that extra bit of shoe, turns it up into the back of the heel. Now, this also works really well if you're hot seating a shoe. If you have a horse that's hooking a hoof on a wire and pulling a shoe, you can spoon both heels hot seat the shoe and this will embed into the back of the heel and make it next to impossible for them to get a wire up underneath the shoe. Handy little trick. Uh, you can see it's real easy to do on the other side which I'll demonstrate. The heel of the shoe pointed towards me. About a 45 to the anvil. Drag blows and then I'm going to pull towards me with my hand. Drop the shoe down. Turn the flat become flatter. And there you go. Now I've spooned both heels. As you can see, the shoe stays nice and flat. The heel of the shoe is turned up. This is called spooning the heel. Often when you're shaping a shoe, you have the perfect fit except for you have too much heel. It's too little to turn in tight. With your hand, with the turning ears of your anvil, just too little shoe. Perhaps you're just wanting to, to work it quick anyways. Neat little trick my dad passed along called spooning the hills. Thanks.